The area of a circle is pi times a radius squared. But hold on, why exactly is that true? Can we convince ourselves that the area of a circle must be pi times a radius squared? The argument that I'm going to show you in this video goes back over 2,000 years to the time of Archimedes and the ancient Greeks. And it utilizes a very important idea, an idea that is still at the core of modern calculus today, the idea of a limit. Let's start with a pizza, which is pretty close to circular. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up my pizza into quarters, and then I'm going to take those quarters and I'm going to rearrange them in a bit of a funny way, giving this interesting sort of wavy shape. Well, that was fun, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to cut each of these quarters into halves, giving me a total of eight pieces. Then I'm going to, similarly, rearrange those pieces, flipping some of them, and putting them all back together in a way that's starting to look a little bit rectangular. For the two straight edges, well, these are just the radius of the original circle. But what about the two wavy edges? Let's think about those for a moment. On the right side, there are four of the eight little arcs that form the edge of the original pizza. If the entire original pizza had a circumference of c, then the right wavy edge is going to have a length of c divided by 2, and likewise for the left side. Now, the wavy sides aren't exactly straight lines. If you took a flexible measuring tape and stuck it all along the edge and you stretched that out, that is what you would get to be the circumference divided by 2. Okay, very nice, but let's go one more time. I'll now cut my eight pieces each in half, giving me 16 pieces total, and I'll try to rearrange those 16 pieces using some flips again. And what I get looks pretty similar, but now it looks even more rectangular than it did before. The pieces are now small enough that I sort of visually lose track of the waviness and sides, and it really starts to look like a rectangle. And again, what we have is the two straight edges have the radius r, and the two wavy sides have an arc length of the circumference c divided by 2. Let's see the same thing with an animation. So here I've taken my circle, I've divided it up into 16 pieces. If I then go and rearrange my pieces, I'm going to put them in this thing that's starting to look a lot like a rectangle. The arc length of the wavy portion on the top is c divided by 2, and c divided by 2 on the bottom as well. And then for the two sides, I'm going to have just the radius of r. All right, now comes the fun part. I want you to imagine that I continue this process. I take the 16 pieces and make it 32, then 64, then 128. I keep on having and having and having. And every time I cut them up, I then put them back into what I'll call my almost rectangle. It's not quite a rectangle, it's almost a rectangle. If I keep going in this way, where I start thinking I have infinitely many different pieces, and that each of those pieces is what we call infinitesimally small, then what I want to imagine is that this is going to start approaching better and better and better an actual rectangle. In sort of math speak, we can say that if we want to get arbitrarily close to having an actual rectangle, I can take an arbitrarily large number of these different subdivisions. I can cut it up as much as I'd like to get it to as close as a rectangle as I might like. And then I just sort of imagine that in the limit as I continue this process forever, that I'm actually going to get a rectangle. Now, the whole point of this is that rectangles are super nice and super easy. I can compute the area of a rectangle. It's just the base times the height. So in this case, the area of the sort of idealized rectangle I'm getting closer and closer to is just going to have a height, the radius, a width, the circumference divided by 2, and so the area of my original is therefore going to be just this radius times the circumference divided by 2. And then if you happen to know that the circumference is 2 pi times the radius, you could plug that in and you get that the area is pi times the radius squared. This idea where you break something up, some challenging problem, something you don't know how to deal with, you break it up into infinitely many little pieces, little pieces that are simpler that you can deal with, that in this case, we rearrange and we're able to put them back together to reassemble them into something simpler, just a rectangle. That idea is at the very core of modern calculus. And indeed, mathematicians have been playing around with this limiting idea for thousands of years. Now, this basic idea is just a common heuristic in our day-to-day -day life. If you take something complicated, like making a cake, which is a big problem, you can break the big problem up into a list of much smaller problems, all the individual steps 
that the recipe tells you to do to make a cake. So this limiting process we're talking about in this video is taking that heuristic to its extreme where you're breaking things up into infinitely many components and hoping that by doing that you can make your problem actually simpler. It's kind of remarkable that this even works. You'd think breaking something into infinitely many steps would make things harder. But as we've seen, we can make a challenging problem actually simpler by using this kind of technique. Now, this idea is going to come back in full force later on in calculus. For example, if I give you a function that is continuous and I ask what is the area under that curve, we're going to do a similar idea of breaking that problem up into a bunch of smaller problems that we can solve and putting it all back together. That's going to be the idea of Riemann integration. If you enjoyed that video, give it a like. If you have a question, leave it down in the comments and we'll do some more math in the next video. Finally, there's only one thing left to do. Let's eat some pizza.